going back to my travails through 40 plus years of practice, and, and these two articles are kind of out of order in the way I stumbled into them. This first paper was published in the fall of 95 in the old defunct ACAM journal, which was actually a pretty good journal, um, where we found a case which clearly was hibernation in peripheral arteries, which had not been described up to that point. I don't think it's been described since then. But clearly what happened with this lady, she, the, the arteries were not plugged up or atherosclerotic. They were clearly hibernating. Um, Jean is going to go through with you the basic physiology of vascular testing in a few minutes. So don't get panicked by all these squiggles. But this lady was in her 50s. She had really no complaints other than some fatigue and uh, no claudication, nothing. We ran vascular studies on her. And as you look at this, because Jean will go through this test with you. The segmental blood pressure show there's no evidence of placking in the arteries, but the pulse volume recording show the arteries were stiff like pipes. There was no compliance. And we put her through chelation therapy and her arteries normalized. You can see the difference. For those of you unfamiliar with chelation, this slide shows the definition of chelation and the next slide shows the mechanism of how it works. And now back to the slides. Here's before, here's after. And this was not classical disease. What happened to this lady is in, in she was born with coarctation of the aorta. She had coarct repaired in her 30s. We found her in the 50s and chelated her and we revivified those arteries. Uh, and that kind of went into my unconscious with how could that possibly work? Although we had the documentation, it worked. How could that actually work if you go back to the conventional thinking of atherosclerosis as cholesterol and stuff like that? Um, this was her uh, PPG, her post uh, photoplethysmograph, which is the test we do to measure it, sometimes called a post occlusive reactive hyperemia. That's the result of the test. And this is the most accurate test in research now to pick up endothelial dysfunction, which is synonymous with, with small vessel disease. This was her test before we did the chelation, and this was her test after we did the chelation. So clearly, the pronounced part of this was the microcirculation. This is in her toes, because Gene will explain this later, clearly responded to what we did. Now, this paper, I actually stumbled into this first when I was working with Dr. Tang and Dr. Soli. They enticed me over to their offices uh, by allowing me to use a, a high advanced nuclear scanner called the First Pass Baird. Atomic 77 system, which was like giving an 18-year-old a Ferrari because I was fooling around in the hospital at that time with nuclear cardiology before the field existed. And they said, well, here's this machine. You get to play with this machine. And after we published the stunning arteries in the legs, I went back and looked at this and realized the same thing was happening in the heart. Um, <clears throat> and so we published this, but actually this case came into my field of vision before the peripheral arterial case. Mm -hmm.